Welcome to the Mixed Reception Podcast. I'm your host, Barrett Sigmund. And today, we got a very special guest, a returning guest, uh, Mr. Matt Holman. What is up? Hey, Barrett. How you doing out there in movie land? I'm doing good. Uh, ready to talk some glass. Uh, well, we were going to do Rise of Skywalker, but I think both of us were just like, eh, I don't feel like it right now. I, I saw that movie in December of 2019, and I am still not ready to see that movie again. We are going to do it at some point. Yes. Um, maybe, maybe by 2025, I will be uh, ready to rot- watch Rise of Skywalker <laughs> a second time. Um, but yeah, so I was like, OK, well, you want to do something else? And you suggested glass. You said, quote, I have uh, very strong opinions on this. I do. And I I read that as not a good thing. You know, uh, when I told you I had strong opinions on it, I actually had a really positive view of the movie. I feel like it was um, a much better, much uh more positive view than like a lot of the critics said, but then I rewatched it right before this podcast. And my opinion has changed radically. <laughs> really? Cause uh, I actually kind of like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, did you, I saw this in theaters. Did you see this? In yeah, theaters? I saw, I saw it in theaters as well. I, I'm uh, I was really excited for this. I loved split. Uh, the the M Night Shyamalan movie that basically led right into this, uh, I thought it was uh, that's probably one of my favorite of his movies is Split, and so I was really stoked for Glass, and I actually really enjoyed it in theaters. And then when I watched it again, um, my opinion may have changed a little bit. Um, so what are your thoughts on Unbreakable? And then follow up question: What do we think of M Night Shyamalan? I mean, wow, what a career! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, M. Night. So I always talk about M. Night Shyamalan because I came in the first M. Night Shyamalan movie I ever saw was Lady in the Water. Oof. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The second one I saw was The Village. <laughs> like, so I came. So I so my experience with M. Night Shyamalan, I never had the peak of like Sixth Sense and Signs and then The Fall. When I started watching him, he was already just crap. Like he was at the point where he was just not putting out good stuff. Um, Unbreakable was probably my third one, which I, I like Unbreakable. It's probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, and then I also saw The Happening, which I really enjoyed because I have a love for like bad movies. It's so uh, bad. It, uh, it's I, so bad. Mark Wahlberg is like a movie. <laughs> I just love my favorite thing about that movie is they were like, look, we need someone to play a science teacher. You know yeah, who we're going to get? Let's get, let's get <laughs> Dirk Diggler. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg. If that is if there's one thing I know about that guy, that guy screams science teacher. Well, what's that scene where the lady's like, did you come here to kill us? And he's like, what? No, <laughs> I've been you know, I, I was talking about the happening recently because uh, my girlfriend has not seen the happening. And I think it's time for a rewatch of that. I really remember enjoying that just because it, you know, it's still is so bad. Yeah, I kind of want to go back and rewatch his really shitty movies because I saw Lady in the Water. I like barely remember. I just remember it being like a kind of a cool concept, but just endlessly convoluted. And that was kind of the point where he like was really up his uh, own ass. I, I remember yeah. that one scene where he like he the 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 wolf kills the 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 movie critic. I remember that mm-hmm. scene, uh, but I my, my main thing I re- I re- yeah my ahead. main thing I remember about Lady in the Water is that there's this guy that only works out one arm, <laughs> <laughs> like and it ends up like paying off in like some weird way with the fairy tale. I just remember this guy just curling, and he's just got really big muscles on one arm, and on the other arm he's got no muscles. That's all I remember about that movie. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it's been a while happening. I think I saw once in the theater and then late and then, uh, then he did, uh, what was it? Last airbender, which a lot of fans hate that movie. I honestly, I saw it once in theater and I just, it was forgettable. I didn't think it was, that's considered one of the worst movies ever. And I just thought, yes. Yeah. And then he did was after that was maybe devil, right? Devil so after Earth. Earth, oh my God, I forgot about that with Jaden Smith and Will Smith. Well, that was funny because that really was rock bottom for him. Because I remember yeah. the advertising 
for that movie, they specifically made sure that his name, like usually it's nowhere. It's like an M. Night Shyamalan film. They, they wanted everyone to know that like he did not direct, like that was not even a part of this movie. Um, yeah, that one, I have still not seen that movie. No, I just, no. I think at that point, like I, I was just done with him. I think uh, I saw the reviews and then I just do not like Jaden Smith at all. Uh, I find him annoying. Um, I've watched reviews on YouTube about it. Everybody talks in a weird, funny accent. <laughs> the, uh, well, <laughs> maybe maybe we'll have to watch After Earth and then talk about that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but I feel like because uh, you can kind of categorize his career in like three stages, right? Like the, the early stuff. Yep. You know, Six Sense, Unbreakable, Signs. Mind. Hot take: I kind of like the Village. I think people have wow. come back around on the Village. Um, I, I definitely am going to talk about the Village on this podcast at some point. But then after the Village, the well, Village was kind of like when people started to turn against them. But then you had like Lady in the Water, yeah, all the movies we just mentioned. That was like his real yeah. shitty period where it's like, how is this the same director? Um, and then I think he's kind of come back a little bit. I wouldn't say he he's never going to be. Uh, as popular as he once was no but i think it's back to the point where people people are curious to see what he does next yeah yeah like his name on a movie is a draw again instead of like a joke yeah i mean because i because the visit i thought was okay uh yeah and then, i enjoyed uh, that split of course is yeah was great, Split's and, great. Uh, i mean we'll get into glass um i mean i i i, I kind of liked it and then he's coming out with old i think uh, oh, is that him? I saw the trailer for that. I didn't realize that was him. Yeah. About like they land on the island and everyone starts getting older, like they're on vacation or something. Yeah, right. That's, uh, yeah, that's coming out like I think in July. Uh, who knows if yeah. it'll be in, that looked yeah, good with uh, was it Guile Garcia Bernal? Yeah, the guy from I love Grand, him, right? Yeah, I love him. He's a guy I feel like doesn't get a lot of work, and he's fantastic in most of the stuff I see him in. Um, well, my question for you is like, what do you, what, I mean, what do you think, uh, what happened to in my Shyamalan? Why did he like start b- getting shitty? So I actually, uh, actually read an interview with him where like one of the things that, so this is the reason he thinks he got shitty, which may not be the correct reason, but in the interview, he said, you know, that, uh, he was at the top of his game. Like, like no one was telling him no, but he had no stakes. And what he said he meant by that is um, one of the things that he talked about is that with Glass, Split, and I think The Visit as well, he self-produced and self-financed most of the movie. And so, like, what he was saying is that, you know, movie studios were throwing money at me, basically, that there, there was no stake in it for me. No kind of thing. So by putting up my own money, that forces my my creativity to kind of uh, like rein itself in and kind of focus a little more. And that's what he said. Once again, oh, take that I with a grain kind of salt. Buy that. Uh, although Lady in the Water was like a bedtime story he told to his kids. I think he yeah. actually probably was passionate about that one. It just didn't work. Well, I remember Disney was like, dude, you no we're not going to produce this this is horrible and he got really like pissed off at him i think he had such a big ego because he just had hit after hit after hit that i think so i think he thought he could do no wrong and then i think i think, I think the last airbender and like after Earth, that was kind of like slumming it because it's like well you know these are like I mean, the last airbender was like a big property at the time and, yeah no those definitely felt more like paycheck gigs yeah, him, well, not and he's not, he's not someone who seems like the, the, the big blockbuster guy. I, yeah. I think he's like found his wheelhouse. Like he I think his last three movies he did with Blumhouse, which is, you know, all and ultra low budget that stuff, ultra low, low budget, like horror thrillers. So I think, you know, yeah, I think he's kind of found his right like niche right now. Um, but uh, let's get into it, though. Uh, I'm going to start off because this was a very polarizing mm, movie. Yeah. Uh, also worth noting, uh, I did not know that what this trilogy was called. It's called the Israel 177 trilogy. I looked that up, uh, but I'm going to start with uh, some reviews. This one is the most positive I could find. Uh, David, then tell me what you think. Uh, David Sims, The Atlantic, gave it a four out of five. It's a film that sometimes plays more as a rambling TED talk than as a straightforward thriller. 
But in this case, I admired Shyamalan's overreach, even as the auteur laid metatextual twist atop twist in the movie's giddily loopy ending. Thoughts? I think that is 100% accurate. Like, that is an excellent summary of this movie. Like, the thing that, the thing that struck me watching it again is seeing more of the shape of what he was trying to do and say, and then just being so frustrated at watching him fail at saying that. Uh, I think that's, I think that, that, re- that review, who was that David Sims? Yeah. The Atlantic. I think that, I think that is really true where it feels more like M night Shyamalan trying to say something about the nature of superheroes and the nature of people and things like that, like, like a rambling Ted talk. And then unfortunately not really getting there and then trying to do a little bit too much in a small window of time. And so it kind of strikes me as six ideas that are all interesting happening at the same time rather than focusing on one. I agree. Uh, We'll get a little bit more into it when we talk notes, but um, like, you're right. There's so many great ideas. And I think um, like some of these ideas could have been their own movie. Like the well, big list at the end with like the secret society, that could have been its own movie. You know what I mean? And you're right. It's like, oh, we just found out about this. And then they find out about this threat and then it's, they solve it in like five minutes. Well, I, I think that's why split works so well is because split is hyper focused on the, uh, the horde and James McAvoy and the girls he kidnaps that's why I think splits work so well is because he really digs into that and the idea of um, being broken and how that actually makes you stronger and things like that. And then just the outstanding performance by James McAvoy, who I think in glass kills it as well. Oh, he's great. Uh, yeah. I can't believe he didn't get nominated. He's yeah. Uh, he's, he is really what I think holds glass together uh, really well because he is just like putting He's he is fully invested in this. Uh, actually, one of my favorite things. I don't know if you saw this in the credits for James yeah, McAvoy. They list every all of his personalities. <laughs> that made me laugh. Actually, that was cool, though. Yeah. Uh, my next review, uh, Empire Magazine, three out of five. Nick D. Simlin. I don't know if I pronounced that name right. Essentially, a split sequel with an unbreakable topping. This is weaker than either of those films, but still has a decent amount of entertaining and creepy sequences. Most of them due to McAvoy's high commitment performance. A hundred percent agree. I mean, I don't think this is as good as the first two, but it's not that far away from them in terms of quality. In my opinion, we'll get into it. Um, In in the Shyamalan filmography, uh, these three movies, Unbreakable, Split, and Glass are in my top five. Maybe, maybe that's why I like this movie so much because it's like, I mean, I, I, I was excited for this movie, but at the end of the day, I'm like, well, it's still in my sham on. And like, I mean, like compared to like fucking, I don't know, the happening, this is like oh, fucking the Godfather. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're tempering your expectations. Yeah. Uh, no, I get that. Yeah. I still think this movie. Yeah. Well, so a sequel with Unbreakable Topping, um, I do kind of wish we'll get into it but like i wish the david dunn character had more to do yeah it, um it, it so still super focused on um the the kevin character well i haven't looked up behind the scenes i would confidently say that the scenes they had one day where samuel l jackson bruce willis and james mcavoy were there like they shot for the, the, like that's it like that was one of the things I noticed rewatching this one because I'm I'm sure you know this about Bruce Willis. Oh he yeah, hates he hates being an actor. Why, why, why do you still do it though? <laughs> like you, you're so rich, just retire. Listeners out there, if you've never seen, um, I think there's a YouTube compilation of his interviews for uh, the movie Red and Red Two. Uh, so like his him doing like his press interviews and everything. Oh, it is. Bruce Willis is is probably 
like I've grown late in my life to respect how little he wants to be an actor. And Bruce Willis, I so I think this is my prediction that there were there was one day where Samuel L. Jackson, James McAvoy, and Bruce Willis were all on set, and then there was only two more days where Bruce Willis was on set. Like he's barely in this. And I that uh, you know what I don't yeah I can't figure it out. I don't know if it's like it, I don't know if like in my Shyamalan just I don't know if it's a direction or like just. I don't know. Like, I feel like Bruce like Willis was like, like, he's asleep. It seems like, I feel like Bruce Willis was like, listen, M, I respect you. We've worked well together. I'll give you two days. <laughs> That's what you get. And then M night Shyamalan was like, okay, let's write him two days worth of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you think because uh, Bruce Willis was just like, listen, I'll be in this, but I have to do the bare minimum. You think maybe like, M. Night Shyamalan kind of wrote around that? 100%. Really? <laughs> yes. That is so sad. Because, that... like, you know, yeah, he, he he sucks now. But, like, I don't know, like, Looper, like, it, Moonrise Kingdom, like, that wasn't too long ago. No, and, that, and there's stuff that he st- does that, you know, in the later parts of his career that he really commits to. But like one of the things that I noticed watching this, just knowing, you know, once again, how Bruce Willis is behind the scenes and everything uh, is how often he is in that poncho, how often you could only see the bottom part of his face <laughs> and how often they're doing shots that would have been stuntmen. Oh, so like uh, that, that big fight, fight at the end. That whole fight, he's, he wasn't even near yeah. the fucking set. He wasn't on set. No. And then anything they're shooting from behind, guarantee you that's a stand in if he's in the poncho. So really the only stuff that I trust that he was there for is when I can see his face. <laughs> and if you look, my guess is two days. That's how long he was on set shooting. You know what? I think, I think, I think I believe you. Yeah. And it's like, he just doesn't emote at all. No. Yeah. He was, he was really kind of sleepwalking his way through this. And Samuel Jackson's fucking great in this movie. He is. Yeah. Everybody Samuel else Jackson, is like, We'll get into like worst performance. I mean, I think we've kind of already answered it, <laughs> but uh, actually I have a different answer for worst performance. than Bruce I, 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 Okay. But everybody else for the most part is so good in this. Yeah, I, 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 I fully, I fully agree with you. Uh, almost fully agree with you. I've got, a, I've got an exception for good performances. All right. Next review. This is a, a, a mixed one, a C plus from entertainment weekly. Uh, Chris Nashawati. I probably, <laughs> I think I fucked that name up, but uh, sorry, Chris, Chris Nachawachi, if you're uh, listening to this. Yes, it's easy to be impressed by the world that Shyamalan has created and now fleshed out, but it would be nice if we were also moved to feel something too. In the end, glass is more half empty than half full, which I gotta say, wow, you could have so many, like, you could do so many fun, like, little, like, like, and well, things. critics were split on <laughs> like, um yeah i don't know I, i've heard i've read that a lot in these reviews like they it just kind of emotionally falls flat at the end oh yeah a hun- i think a hundred percent i i don't think that they're like once again i think the reason i don't want to focus too much on split but i think the reason split works is because it's so small and it's focused on just that story And what happens in Glass is he's trying to say too much and he doesn't have a good anchor point for anything. You know, in in Split, you've got the anchor point of uh, of Kevin and the Horde and like some of and not the not the not the beast and things, obviously. But like, you know, the the more docile personalities and things like that. And then you've got the anchor of, you know, Anya Taylor Joy who is going through the same thing as these girls are, but she's so different. And then, you know, it turns out that it's because she is, you know, broken too, in a sense. And so like there's that emotional core and split that is not in glass hands down. Uh, well, I think a big part of that is because Kevin, uh, not Kevin, but uh, David Dunn is just barely in this and <laughs> he's kind of the main protagonist. Pretty much. Oh, I want to talk about, uh, uh, Glass's mom, Mr. Glass's oh mom. Oh my God! I'm okay. We'll get to that in notes. I have a lot. I have a lot to say. 
<laughs> hey, what? Uh, I think, okay, let me get through these reviews first. Uh, Richard Roper, Chicago Sun-Times, two and a half out of four. Shyamalan being Shyamalan, Glass does have a distinctive look and some pretty cool moments and a half-decent twist or two. Mostly, though, it's an underwhelming, half-baked, slightly sour, and even off-putting finale. Uh, the finale is fucking bummer. I mean, everyone dies. <laughs> I, like, I, I actually kind of like that. Like the, the twist, that, yeah. The twist I think that really works for me is the idea that Mr. Glass was never, you know, going to have them fight at the tower, that it was all about just getting the fact that superheroes are out there, out there, because that, that's been his goal the whole time is to just get people so people know that he's not crazy. That that superheroes are real, that people can gain these superpowers and things like that. And I think that twist is a cool twist. Doesn't quite work in the movie. Well, I just think it should. It's a great idea. I just wish it was like, like I said earlier, Like I think the whole like, I want to expose superheroes. And also, I want to stop this organization who's trying to stop the superheroes yeah. from being exposed. I think that should have been the movie. Yeah, 100%. Um, not to I say think, I didn't like some of the um, and we'll get into it in notes, but like I did kind of like the, I did like the setting of the film and and like the idea like they're in an asylum and hey like, are you really a superhero or is all this in your head like that? I mean that was an interesting idea too. I don't I know. think it. There's I like, think it's a better movie if you know at the beginning that Sarah Paulson is a part of this secret society. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but that's the thing. Shyamalan has to have a twist. He has to be, you know. I, I think it's a better movie because one of the things that I remember when I watched it the first time that kept bothering me is it's like, yeah, look, I get that you're trying to convince them that they're crazy, but I've watched two movies and I've seen them do superhero stuff. So they're not crazy. Like there was never a second where I believed that Bruce Willis was actually imagining this or that or that. James McAvoy was imagining this because this whole series has literally been built around the fact that they're not crazy, that That's they do have too. superpowers. Yeah, we as the audience know that they really do have superpowers. So so those scenes just fell flat for me because it's like, but if if you go ahead and you say, OK, you know, you, you have Sarah Paulson walking out of this meeting with the little tattoo and everything. And you set up the fact that she's a part of this secret society, then it makes sense. Then it makes sense what she's trying to do is it's not that she believes that they're crazy. She knows they're not. But what she's trying to do is she's trying to save them from being killed, because the only way that they can survive is if the, she manages to convince them that they're wrong. What if I they, think that's I a far say, more interesting movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just think I think Shyamalan couldn't help himself. I just think he's like, well, I'm the twist guy. Well, I have to have a twist. I mean, I already had like a twist. You already had a twist that kind of worked with the um, with the Elijah. Uh, yeah, with the killing, plan. Uh, Kevin's dad. Yeah. Like that. That was your twist. I thought I really love, you know, that shot and the way they did that, too, where it's, you know, Kevin's dad walking onto the train and it sits and then they keep pulling through the chairs. And then it's that opening shot of Unbreakable. With Bruce Willis, I thought that was really well done. Yeah, I just think a couple tweaks. Then I liked the movie, but I think a couple of tweaks. I think it could have been a lot better. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like honestly, like ah, oh, you could do so much world building. Like I would like to see. Well, what's going on in other parts of the country? Where what are some of these other superheroes and stuff? You know, um, why why and then maybe expand just expand upon it. Like why why does this why does this um organization. Uh, want to you know want to stop them from um, you know coming out? Um, I don't know. Did Sarah Paulson have like a history with somebody who had powers? You know that was bad. I mean, you know, just like you, so much you can do with it. I I yeah, hundred percent agree. And I got one last review. This is a bad review. One after okay. Uh, Michael Rothman, consequence of sound. Shyamalan comes off so smug by the end of this movie. That's just, that it's insufferable. And also kind of jarring. It's as if he's learned nothing from his past and still believes he's pulling a quick one on his audience. Um, I was, I, I think he had good intentions. I don't know if I'd say he was like smug, but I do. But as we just said, I do think it's like, I got to have that twist. 
I, I think uh, this might be the only case in which I agree with every review that you've read, like from like the really good ones to the bad one, like all of them, I think are correct. Like, I think this is an incredibly flawed movie. And part of the reason that I like it is, I think, because I see what he was trying to do and what it could be, not necessarily for what it is, if, if that makes sense. No, I'll buy that. Um, also worth noting, uh, I looked this up. Uh, Bruce Willis was nominated for a Razzie for Worst Supporting Actor. He did not win. I don't know who won that year. Um, which, yeah, I think that's warranted. I, I mean, I think that's Actually, fair. There's probably like way more worse performances that year. I think I think that's fair, but I would also say that inside of this movie, there are multiple bad performances. It is not just Bruce Willis, like on the level of Bruce Willis. Uh, well, we'll get into it in notes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, I'll, I'll give you the score. Critics, 37%. Oof. I don't think it's... Well, yeah. I don't think it's a 37% bad. No, nah, I, I, I'd give it 50 to 60. Is yeah. Is kind of where yeah. I'd place it. Um, audience, 67%. Uh, consensus, Glass displays a few glimmers of In Night Shyamalan at his twisty world-building best, but ultimately disappoints as the conclusion to the writer-director's long gestating trilogy. I guess I'll buy that. Yeah, I, I feel like that is a very accurate description. <laughs> uh, Medi Metacritic 43 and uh, IMDb 6.7. Oh, well, I people on IMDb seem to like it. Yeah, 6.7 is, is, is not bad. Not bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, people like it more than the critics did. Uh, I guess I'm a dummy. I don't know. I, I liked it. <laughs> I'm one of them. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, the like one, I really enjoyed it when I saw it in theaters. And then when I watched it again, it just um, I think on a second viewing, the things that frustrated me and the flaws, I think, were more apparent. There's just kind of no other way to put it than watching it the first time. And I think that's why it is. I'd still watch it again. I'd still I'd still I still like it. I still don't think that it's a bad movie, but uh, it is definitely not a perfect one. Yeah, uh, it's worth noting. I Sunday, I had myself a day Sunday. I watched all three back to back: Unbreakable, Split, Glass. That's a good time. That was. I like, wanted to do that. I actually bought all three on Blu-ray. That's why I wanted to do Glass because I was like, oh, I just bought this on Blu-ray. Ah, then shit. I didn't. So I went them. to Walmart and Target. I could not find it, and I. But by the time I found out I was doing this, I wouldn't have gotten it in time from Amazon. So I just had to fucking rent them. But um, oh. oh well. <laughs> worth having, it would be worth having adding to my collection um box office uh 20 million dollar budget grossed 111 in the u.s there you go that's a success and 247 worldwide wow yeah that so that's a success very like, yeah very successful movie it made 10 times its budget yeah that's a, that's a yeah. success um all right well let's get into notes um i wrote some stuff down um the, the, the opening of the movie, I, I actually, I like catching up with David Dunn and, and his son. I like that they have um, the home security, Dunn security, home security, um, and that's kind of like their front for what they're, you know, I like how they have like, the, you know, they, they have like the, the police radio and they, you know, they kind of figure out where all these yeah. criminals are from like the news and like the radio and they have... Um, specified walks and stuff and and like the son i kind of like is he's kind of like uh the oracle and he's kind of like batman i i, I like yeah. that stuff it, it's I, I think i think that works the thing i hate about the opening is m night Shyamalan when he shows up Mysterio? as the uh, yeah because it's not a it. i because we uh, re watching um unbreakable uh there's a scene where uh he i guess uh pulls him aside yeah and um he he's like hey, cause he thinks he has drugs on him, which also. Uh, then my Shamlon has a cameo in Split. Is that that's got to be the same character, right? I think so. Yeah, because he was doing camera stuff. Yeah, in fact, it, psychiatrist. It, in the in the when he meets Bruce Willis in Glass, he does reference that they've like like he recognizes him. Yeah, and but like I didn't need that. Like that was like four lines of dialogue and I just don't care 
Like if I like if you're a director doing a cameo, like Hitchcock it, walk through, walk through the scene. Don't Tarantino it. I don't need a uh, a 20 minute long uh, scene of you in this. And I'm exaggerating, but it, it really frustrated me. So I didn't mind it, but I, I kind of get what you're saying. Like, obviously, like in my is one of those directors, like everybody knows what he looks like. Um, and it's like it's just kind of distracting. Yeah. It was the whole time you're thinking that's a director. That's a director. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I kind of I didn't hate the scene though. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, like, oh, I've never recognized you before. And then, um, he's like talking to his son. He's like, hey, I'm gonna go on one of my walks. And he's like, I don't think you should go on one of your walks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I think it'd be good to go out and get some fresh air. I think I'm gonna go on a walk. No, I think you should stay on, stay in, and not go on one of your walks. And like, and like, Shemlin's like, Jesus, let your dad go go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, I, the, I, it was a good payoff. That I, I was. I didn't funny. hate it. I didn't hate it. There's been there's been worse in my Shyamalan game. I, I would have liked it more if it was just like another actor. I think like I think the dialogue works, but it just bothers me that it's M Night Shyamalan. Oh God, I remember uh, Lady in the Water? I barely remember this, but I know like didn't he end up being? Uh, he's like really in Lady in the Water. Yeah, he's like yeah. A, a substantial part, and yeah. he basically. Um, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it. He is like the writer, the guy who's going to change the world. I remember. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like that, that movie, that's when he really got really <laughs> far up his ass. He was sniffing his own farts. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, I like, I like the beginning. I like all that stuff. It was just like really kind of cool to just catch up with these characters. And, and see I think I, I definitely think the David Dunn stuff is cool. I don't need the Horde stuff because all that is, is basically the same thing I just saw in Split. So, like, I get, like, you want to go ahead and establish this just in case someone's walking in and they haven't seen, you know, the split or whatever. You don't want them to be completely lost. But there, I think there's a, too much time at the beginning devoted to the horde and he's kidnapped the girls and all of that. Like, it should have just been David Dunn. We get introduced back to him. He's going off on one of his walks. And then he he touches the you know he touches kevin and that's it he flashes back and he knows that kevin has these girls trapped somewhere i think there's a lot of time devoted to setting up things that we already know in the beginning uh so like the david dunn stuff works because we haven't seen him since unbreakable and now you know the two second cameo at the end of split uh but the horde stuff is just kind of the same things I just spent an hour and a half watching and split. So just get me into the action, get the information that if I was a first time viewer that I need to know and then move on. Uh, did you like him uh, basically following those kids home and uh, beating them up? David. Oh yeah. 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 That was nice. That was a nice like, introduction. He just like, the silhouette of like him and his poncho. That was a really yeah. good introduction. Um, I, I, I'm fine with like the introduction to the Horde in, in, in this movie. Uh, I will say, and we'll talk a little bit more throughout notes, but I think you could cut a lot of the Kevin stuff. I agree. There's too many, like, there's just too many scenes of him just, I, I think they just got wild. Like, oh, uh, like, I think they were in awe of James McAvoy and uh, all these impressions he could do. And I, I don't know, some of these scenes just feel like filler. Like, it's just like the whole purpose of the scene is just to see, like, have fun with the split personalities. I think I think most of this movie is filler. <laughs> like, I, I think it is a lot of uh, like like a lot of just unnecessary scenes. There's just like no other way to put it. And it's like. And I think that does a disservice because I guarantee you if this had been a little less filler, uh, he probably would have been able to get these ideas across a little bit better that he was trying to actually say and do. And maybe the twist wouldn't have felt so contrived and last minute because he would have been able to devote time to looking back and saying, oh, that's why they did this. And that's why they did this. And that's, you know, like the way a good twist should work where you can look back and see that this, you know, like in Sixth Sense, spoiler alert for Sixth Sense. <laughs> uh, but it's like, you know, like with Bruce Willis being dead. And then it makes sense because like. Wait, 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 whole- wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You tell me Bruce Willis is dead in that whole movie? No, he's not yes. alive. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry to spoil an almost 30 year old movie now. Uh, but one of the things, uh, you know, so the big twist is Bruce Willis is dead. And then if you go back, you see that Bruce Willis interacting with living people. He never does like the scenes when he's talking to his wife and he thinks his wife is just ignoring him because she's angry. No, it was because he was a ghost the whole time. And it's like all of this other stuff that you've seen in the movie makes sense. And that's the way a good twist should work. But the problem is, is that with the if so, if he had cut some of that filler and said, OK, you know what, we're going to go ahead and devote some more time to development and things. Hold on. Molly <laughs> just, came, Molly just came in and said, wait a minute, Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. <laughs> Sorry to spoil six cents for you, seen Molly. That movie, Matt. <laughs> How did you not know that? Every I haven't seen six cents either. And I know that. Wait, you I, haven't you have seen it. No, I haven't. <laughs> I, I haven't seen Six Sense or Sides. Boy. Is the boy dead? No, the boy's not dead. Okay, well, this whole thing's fucked for me. I guess I've never <laughs> seen it. Um, I did like... Yeah, I agree with you. Um, yeah, you could cut a lot of stuff. Um, I did like... Uh, I did like the fight between David and... Oh, the- yeah, I think that works, yeah. And he's, like, throwing the table. And this mm-hmm. poor cheerleader... Gets a table thrown at her. Holy they, what's shit. it called? Like later in the movie, they're like, she just has a broken rib and some arms. I'm like, I'm like uh, what uh, are you talking uh, about? <laughs> no, that bitch. <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> I watched her get crushed flat by that table 10 minutes ago. She is not a broken rib by no, ass. No, she died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh they fall out the window and then they get captured uh and taken to asylum yeah and that's really when the movie starts um i also uh, i you know i like the opening stuff i like catching up with david honestly they should have just started the movie though at the asylum and then like maybe yeah. through flashback we get what has david been up to and things like that yeah actually i, I kind of agree with you that would have been like whoa like it's because i like when sometimes when movies start off and you're like wait what's going on like what like like Oh, this familiar character is in a weird, um, um, you know, situation. Yeah. Um, location. Well, it's like it's like you said, the movie doesn't start until they get to the asylum. Technically, like what we're kind of watching is the prologue of how they got there. Why don't we just go ahead and just get dropped straight into look? These three characters have now been together, and they're all in this asylum, and then we just catch up either via flashback if you wanted to do something like that or or just through dialogue or context clues whatever yeah no I, that, that's actually not a bad idea that, that would have been interesting um and i i do i do like the interrogation scene where they're all three mm-hmm. in the room with sarah paulson um as we said like her whole point well at the time is we we learned that she wants to convince them that uh, they're not really superheroes. It's all in their head. And I, and I, I, I mean, yeah, we, we as an audience know that they really do have superhero powers, but like, I still like the idea of uh, them having doubt the characters. And I do like, I mean, I like how she's like, um, yeah, I mean, she's putting doubt in their heads. Like, oh, well, like those bars you, you twisted, like th- that was like, those were like hundreds of years old. Uh the, the gunshot wounds and stuff. Well, those those bullets, like, moisture got to them. So they were, you know, I, uh, and then, like, him climbing the walls, like, well, you know, there are people who, you know, do that, you know. I, I yeah. kind of liked um, her kind of planting the seeds in their head. I don't think they do it with Bruce Willis enough, though. That's the I, only thing. I, my, my thing that kind of frustrated me is that I get what she's doing. I get the doubt that she's trying to plant, but I never really see them in doubt like the most doubt, doubt. you can tell kevin's a little he, bit in doubt but bruce willis is just like no but it, it yeah it kind of but it kind of just it if the whole crux of the movie is listen you guys don't have superpowers and we're gonna convince you that you don't i would have liked to see more than just that scene you know because because she goes and she sets up the hoses and all of that and I, yeah, I don't know. I would have liked to see more 
than just her trying to convince them by talking to them for a little bit. Maybe like, you know, trying to like, you know, say, you know, t- trick Bruce Willis into thinking he doesn't have super strength. Like in the sense of like, you know, he's she's like lift this and he can't lift it because now he has the doubt or whatever, like like that kind of stuff to make it feel more like she really is putting every effort into convincing them because all she did was talk with them for 15 minutes. That's like <laughs> um, also too, like, couldn't they just pretend that like, oh, yeah, uh, uh, we're not superheroes. I'm like, OK, you're right. I would have done. <laughs> That's what I would have done. I would have been like, you're right. I get why Kevin can't do that because, like, you know, the, his personalities are all yeah. like they think the beast is a god and everything. But I don't understand why Bruce Willis wasn't just like, yeah, you're right, not super. See ya. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's one of those movies like, like a lot of great ideas, but like, really, if you think about it, you could, there's so many holes and stuff you it, can just. I feel like that. I feel like that's a fair thing to say about ninety percent of Shyamalan's filmography. Yeah. Um, also, what is his obsession with water? Like you think maybe, signs? Oh, oh, you haven't seen signs. Spoiler. But alert. no signs. Signs. Yeah, is, is water. Yeah. Is like their aliens is the weakness of the um, water. Well, have you heard? Have you heard the theory that they're not aliens? What are they? They're demons. Uh, so what the wa- the reason they're afraid of the water, remember Mel Gibson is like a failed priest. He used to be like a priest or a preacher or something, right? Isn't yeah. that signs? So what they're actually doing is they're demons uh, afraid of holy water because he like blessed the water basically, which makes more sense than aliens oh being afraid. God. Actually, uh, oh wow, that's an interesting theory. Um, yeah. but I don't know, like with this movie, it's like, well, towards the end, it's like, he isn't even submerged in water. He's just like a little bit wet and it's like, he just can't move. Like, I don't know. I just think it's kind of a lame. I mean, it doesn't ruin the movie for me, but like, I don't know, like water's his weakness. Well, I, mean, I like well, the- Like 90% of your body is water. Like, can he not drink water? Like, like what? <laughs> I'm just like, picturing. I'm just picturing a scene of him now, like drinking a bottle of water, and he just starts choking, and his son's like, "Dad, Dad, are you okay?" <laughs> He's just like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was vodka, but it was water." <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, like I said, it doesn't kill it for me, but that is like, oh, that's kind of lame. I actually like the way that they try to put the logic of that that it's all in his head, that it came from, you know, him almost drowning as a kid. And that's why he's like, that's why the water, that it's all psychological. That just like, just like Kevin, you know, is, is his power comes from the fact that he's all these personalities and, and everything. I liked that Bruce Willis, uh, they go and establish kind of the fact that the reason that the water affects him so much is not because it's actually affecting him. It's because it was him in a moment of weakness. So it's like triggering something in his head. Yeah. Um, and I also like that scene where his son is like, I guess he's like at a gym and he sees like a man like lifting a lot of weight. And he's like, oh, well, like maybe my dad, you know, maybe he isn't that special. I don't know. Like eh, kind of half baked, but like interesting concept. Um, and then I like everything with Elijah. Like, I like how he's playing dumb. Yeah. And I like his, like, well, my, my big question, how is he getting out of the room initially? That I was never clear on. Because they kind of hint that he's, like, kind of been getting out of his room a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, now, uh, when when that one guard gets killed, he takes his badge. Yeah. But, like but he's get, been getting out of the room before then. You 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 see him out in the hall and things like that. Yeah. So he's been uh, getting like, out of his room. Yeah, because because like the whole thing is like uh, they want to give him a lobotomy. Yeah. Um, which that was great because like you find out that he like goes in the, like the room, the operation room, and he puts the glass over the laser thing, covers it. Um, that that whole thing was great. Yeah. That big reveal. Um. But then it's like, well, well, wait a minute, like how? And then he also he's like re, re, he records himself on the, the security cameras, mm-hmm. um, so they just think he's doing something else. Um, that that all that stuff was great, um, but then it's like, how'd you get out of the room in the, in the first place, though? He's Mister Glass. Did I miss something? 
First name, Mr. Last name, Glass. Also, can we talk about the, the uh, I guess, the nurse or, or whoever's, he's basically, um, he shows up to work and then that was the, that's the thing. Like, Mr. Glass has been paying so much attention. He's like, oh, yeah, well, the, when the shift changes, like, he he spends, like, 15 minutes talking. All yeah. Um, and he's, like, sitting there, like, hey, like, did you try those, like, multivitamins? And, like, <laughs> like that shit's so stupid. <laughs> You don't you don't talk to about your coworkers to multivitamins for 15 minutes every day before you start. I, know, I feel like in my Shaman also like has like, a lot of bizarre dialogue in his movies. Like he does. Like, like, like I don't know. I can't like it's just like not how people talk. No, I, I agree. You know, I, I want to say something about Mr. Glass that did bother me. Um, Where. So, like, I get that he got like the he had like the fancy Mr. Glass suit. But then he has like the MC like the thing. pin the M- yeah MG for Mister Glass. I was like, <laughs> how? <laughs> I just love the idea of like him having to go to a jeweler and be like, listen, I need a cravat pin, and I wanted to say MG for Mister Glass, and also deliver it to the psychiatric institution, please. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> Like, yeah, you know, I get, I bet he got it the same way he got out of his room uh, before he took the badge. Yeah, so that doesn't really make sense. But I did like that big reveal, like, oh, like, you know, you know, that was great. Like, oh, he like blocked the glass with this, you know, blocked yeah. the laser and like he re-recorded the footage. Like, that was all great. When he, like, I was so, sh- like, when I first saw this in the theater, when he slices that guy's mm-hmm. neck, I was like, oh, shit. Like, that was really great. Um, and I like the meeting between Elijah and uh, the Horde, Kevin. That's a great scene. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that works really well. And I love just how like calm and nonchalant like Mr. Glass is because it's like, yeah, I mean, you might kill me, but all I felt in my whole life is pain. Yeah. Like, in my sh- like, like uh, not in my Shyamalan, Um Samuel Jackson is so great in that scene. I, I think I think Samuel L. Jackson, you know, he's he's not in it a whole lot, but he delivers. Like he he goes and he's invested in what he's doing. And and I, I like that. That's the thing. That's like the main difference between like Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis. Like, cause I feel like Samuel Jackson is in everything. Yeah. He's, he's in, in so lot. much stuff. He's he probably works just as much as Bruce Willis, but he still gives a shit. I think so. Like, uh, it's just so crazy. I don't Bruce Willis just so tired if you don't want to do movies. I don't get it. <laughs> Look, he's gotta have funding for harmonicas, okay? Oh yeah, he did have a music career. <laughs> yeah, uh, the life. Have you ever? Okay, first off, have you ever seen Hudson Hawk? No. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we need to watch Hudson Hawk and talk about it. It is hands down one of my favorite terrible, terrible movies. <laughs> and if you want to see some quality Bruce Willis harmonica playing and singing, you got to tune into Hudson Hawk. Uh, okay. The Return of Bruno, which was his album, they have like a song or two actually in the in the movie. And there's Bruce Willis singing with Danny Aiello. It's it's crazy stuff. Okay, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Um, all right, we gotta talk about Elijah's mom. This bitch is crazy. <laughs> like she's like talking to Sarah Paulson, and she's like, "Listen, now, I'm not defending what my son did. <laughs> he's trying to find himself. He's trying to find meaning." I'm like, "I just Your son is a domestic terrorist." I just couldn't get around the terrible old age makeup. Well, that too. The, the Why didn't they just makeup? cast? two different actresses i couldn't get around the fact that it that it was just so, the, like just terrible old age makeup but also too she's like not i don't know it's weird she's not she knows that what her son did is bad but she's like i don't want to say enabling but she's like almost like i don't know it feels like, to weird. me. He's like, yes, I know he did bad things, but you know he's trying to find his purpose in the world, like almost kind of defending it. It feels to me like the first draft of the script just had Anya Taylor Joy's character and uh, David Dunn's kid, and then like someone gave him the note of like, well, what about Mister Glass? Should he have a loved one too? And he was like, yeah, it'll be his fucking mom or whatever. <laughs> like she doesn't. She she has no point in this. Like. She really doesn't. And at the end, like and the when they're in the, the 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 train station, they're all like holding hands. It's so weird. Yeah, it's, it's so like weird. Anya Taylor Joy showing up is weird enough. 
Like, uh, like not really, it works a little bit. Only, she's the only one that can. I actually like that scene in the uh, in the hospital where she's talking to him. And I like at the I, end where she kind of calms him down and then he gets shot. But I like that. The scene works. She's great in it. The But the logic of that character. You're right. Like, why like was he actively really, seeking yeah, out? Yeah, uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And then like having this like it like like a romantic love story like that. That oh, was the uh, beat. You know what? I was kind of getting a, a, a smidge of like um, attraction between them a little. Bit. Yeah. It like is that a little was weird. The, that was the beats of what was happening is that it was like like she fell in love with him and it and it just didn't like it didn't work for me. Like she's great. I think she's fantastic. I think she commits. I think the interactions between them work. I think they're both really talented with good chemistry, but the logic of why that character would be like. I'm going to help you person that I saw kill two of my friends, but then spared me uh, is just. Um, uh, well, yeah, you're right. And like, and like, why would you like actively go seek? Especially because they establish you. that there's time between split and this movie. Like, that's the thing. Like if, if this had been right after split, boom glass happens. I think it is. I think I think from what I read, I don't have an exact number, but I think it is like um It seems like, like it's probably week. been like a, a well, I was going to say a couple months. Like it seems like that. Like they are on the hunt for the horde, but they can't quite find him and things like that cuz Bruce Willis is saying, you know, yeah, this guy the horde blah blah blah, they've been looking for him. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, you got a good point though. Um and then we get uh we get the big breakout and then uh Kevin versus David round two. Um, I actually like this uh, fight uh, and I actually like um, the POV shot from like the girls that yes. in the van. I'm like, oh, yep. like, there's some good camera work. I, I actually, so I, I was watching that fight with a little more critical eye for the camera work in there. And like, I'm watching it and I like, there's a lot of POV, like, like them choking each other. And then I'm looking at Kevin choking Bruce Willis and Bruce Willis choking Kevin, blah, blah, blah. And like all of that, it's really tight shots. And like one of the things I think is I think that's kind of like a commentary on how superhero fights are filmed nowadays, where they're not like they're big and flashy. Like this is just a brutal fight. It is just them punching each other. They're not like there's no art. There's no grace, anything like that. They're just punching each other and choking each other. And it's not like pretty and it's not interesting. And I think that's on purpose. Well, yeah, I think the, the objective with these movies is to make a somewhat grounded, you know, yeah. approach to a superhero movie. Um, and then uh, we get the big reveal. Elijah killed uh, Kevin's dad, which I, I, is a nice little reveal. I like that. And uh, then Kevin, like, smashes uh, Glass's bones. But how he really dies is, like, he just kind of falls out of his chair. Pretty much. <laughs> Awesome. I was like, I, I've watched Kevin literally spend this whole movie squeezing people to death. Like he does that like eight times. And then when he comes to like the perfect person to squeeze to death, he doesn't do it. All right. And then I, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, Elijah Samuel Jackson. Yeah. There's like this black shit on his teeth. Did you notice no. that? No, maybe it's supposed to be blood, I guess. From, like, it's, it's, black. Internal injuries. it's like black stuff on his teeth. No, I didn't notice that. Oh my but... god, I'm, I, I'm not crazy. I, <laughs> I can like, believe you. You know what? I kind of remember seeing it the first time in theaters. I remember I was like, "What the f like? What the fuck is on his teeth?" I guarantee you, it's supposed to be really bad. It's probably really bad fake blood. Like it's supposed to be. He's been all smashed up inside, so now he's got these internal injuries. So blood is leaking out from his mouth. But someone fucked up. Uh, and then basically, our characters die. Uh, Bruce Willis gets David gets shoved into uh, a puddle. There's a pothole with puddle in it. And then uh, he reaches his hand out to Sarah Paulson. And then we get the, the, the second big twist, which is that she works for a superhero society and uh, they all, they want to they get rid of all the superheroes. They don't want them to, to, to be exposed. But the frustrating thing is, because like when I remembered it, I remembered him touching her and that happens. But that's not what happens. He touches her and he sees 
a restaurant where they all I stand so up to say about this restaurant. and close the door because they're alone, but they don't explain while they're there. Then yeah, oh, she you're goes right, you're right. and yeah. says something yeah. along the lines of, and then we flash back to that same scene later because then yeah. she shows back up at the restaurant again. I'm like, and I didn't need that. Why didn't you just do it then when That's he touches point. her? Um, yeah, they show a little bit of that scene. And then um, yes. there's like, we keep getting close ups on, on the um, the cops wrist. Yeah. Which is like uh, uh, the, like a shamrock. Yeah. Or, yeah. Something. So I got so many things. OK, so one, they're having these meetings in these restaurants and they have to wait for people who aren't in their society to leave. <laughs> but then I have so many questions, like how many people are in the society what if somebody comes in that isn't part of the society before you close the doors is, is, is the, the waiting staff is, are the cooks, are they part of the society? Cause they can probably hear you. <laughs> uh, why don't you just meet in a warehouse? My main question is why did they decide on a clover? That is like, that is the plainest <laughs> symbol for a secret society ever. Like, what happens if someone had a four leaf clover here and they weren't part of the society? I feel like that's very possible. Yeah. What if some guy had a, a clover tattoo and he's like, wait, what are you guys talking about? Like, come on, you're part of society. Wait a minute. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, the whole restaurant thing's stupid. Why don't, why don't you just like meet at, uh, yeah, meet at like uh, somebody's house? Or wouldn't have been, or maybe she goes back into the asylum and that's where they are. Like that would make sense. So that is kind of stupid. Also, too, I have a lot of questions. So she calls, hey, we have a situation at the hospital. Um, we're calling the cops. Calling the ambulance. I'm calling the cops. Um, you're, how deep does this organization go? Because it seemed like she called, like, regular cops. But then, I guess, other cops who were secretly cops that were really Yeah, because because after, after, da- after David dies, the two guys that are standing next to him that that hold back his son yeah. aren't secret society guys they're they don't know why he's dead in the puddle like they're they're looking as confused as the son is also too okay so if we go by that logic uh are those cops just standing around watching these other cops just kill him <laughs> I mean, hold on. If there's one thing we've learned over the past year, the cops will stand yeah. around and watch one of their own I kill guess someone. I guess that's a valid point. <laughs> I feel that question is not needed. <laughs> All right. And my shovel, I was just ahead of the times. All right. Valid point. But I guess, I don't know. Like, how often does this happen? I have so many questions. Like, how often does this happen? Was Sarah I have Paul, a- like, hey, this is a real situation. Secret. I have a I- question for you. Sure. After the horde throws David into the water thing, how does he get out? He smashes. Um, the yeah. Side. With super strength. Yeah. But yeah, he's weakened. He shouldn't have super strength. Exactly. Yeah. If he was so weak. Yeah. That it, uh, that he could be killed by getting drowned in a puddle. How did he get out of the water thing? Yeah, and then when he's out of the water uh, pool, um, he can barely move. Like, the, the yeah. officers pick him up with ease. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, make, that like, if you really, really think about it, it, uh, it makes no sense. I, but one of the things that I do like is I, I really like just killing him by drowning him. Like, like I like the fact that, like, these heroes die in really boring ways. Like, I, I don't know. There's just, there's, I think, I think that's on purpose. I think Shyamalan's goal was we're going to kill them in really mundane ways, but didn't really think so much about how to get there. Cause I think he's trying to say something. I think he's, I think that's what he's trying to do to say he something. That's what he's trying to say. <laughs> Uh, I I think that is true. <laughs> I, I can't argue with that. Like it is one of these movies that, like I said, um, it both m- mystifies and frustrates me because I feel like every time like I watch it, I see a little more of what he was trying to do. And then like I see something and I'm like, but wait, if this is what he's trying to do, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a lot of his movies. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, I mean. We kind of get the yeah uh, the whole 
we find out Mr. Glass real plan. Um, and then we found out he downloaded all the footage and they release it to the internet. And then everybody knows that they're superheroes now, which like, was it like a mass email? Like what? I got to say, it's a pretty shitty secret society. If you don't control the internet. <laughs> Like, I feel like if you were like a legit secret society, that's they're probably not like a really good one. Like, there's like the Illuminati, and like way below them is the Clover Squad or whatever. Clover Squad. <laughs> <laughs> like, because the fact that you don't have, you're not able to control someone releasing something to the internet, and you're a secret society, tells me that you're not a very good one. Yeah, I don't know the ending. I don't know, like. To do it, he just like post it live on the internet. I don't know. Like, did he send a mass email? Well, I it's he, so they said that he sent it to a private server, and okay. I assume that he somehow rigged that private server to just kind of just like release it to news outlets and YouTube, and okay, Daily Motion and whatever else they've got. But yeah, the ending is kind of, I get where he's going for, but at the same time, you got that mom holding the hands of the son. <laughs> that is so weird. And, and <laughs> fucking um, the, the Casey, I think is her name. Yeah. And it's just like, well, no, nah, bitch, look on my hand. Like, you fucking, <laughs> your son was evil. <laughs> It is. It is such an. So that's weird. the end. Like that's the last shot of the movie. Yeah. It is so. And, and, just, and that is like the big emotional crux of your 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 trilogy. Yeah. It's like the last. Yeah. It's like it's very odd. Yeah. It, it it's just. It's just mystifying. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, and it just bothers me. It bothered me when I saw it the first time. It bothered me this time as well. Um, that's what I got for notes. Uh, anything else to add? Uh, da, da, da. I didn't really take notes. Uh, that's fine. We well, no, like, but I've I've got I've got a few things that I noticed that that kind of frustrated me. Uh, I've gone over a decent amount of them already, but I do just want to reiterate um, how little Bruce Willis really wants to be there, and yeah. how apparent that is to me, and how much it both delights me. <laughs> It makes me very furious. No, it makes um, me very furious because if you if you don't want to be in the movie, if you don't want to do movies anymore, then then retire. You have enough yeah. money. I yeah. don't think this is a Nicolas Cage situation where it's like, hey, I'm in bank, I, I'm bankrupt, and I have to do these shitty movies. I th- I honestly think that this was, I think this was a loyalty thing. I think this was Bruce Willis being like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll do your movie M Night. You know, you you've been good to me. We've had successful movies together. Uh, and M night was, you know, and, but Bruce Willis was like, listen, I don't want to be the main character. Like, I think that's kind of where he was. I honestly think it's a much better movie if the focus is on David Dunn and yeah, the whole he's, the side character. He's, he's the protagonist. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do. I also do not think that Bruce Willis wanted to do a whole movie, basically be there as much as James McAvoy definitely was because he's in so much of this movie uh yeah i bet you, i guarantee you he had cue cards too <laughs> yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i wouldn't be surprised if like you know when you watch like snl and you can see that they're reading off the cue cards i wouldn't be surprised if i go back and take a look i could slow i can see Bruce yeah like um, maybe like you can see a reflection or something i don't know yeah <laughs> Uh, so yeah no uh, i think we pretty much hit on a lot of the stuff i wanted to talk about uh, as far as worst performances go, well, we'll get into categories in a second. Oh, okay. Uh, categories me, are coming up. I'm going I'm to throw a little bit of trivia at you. Trivia okay. is harder with newer movies. I'm finding because this movie is only like two years old. Mm-hmm. And, um, a lot of the trivia was dumb. It was like Sarah Paulson was in oceans. Eight. did you know that Bruce Willis had a cameo in oceans 12? Like stuff like that. <laughs> Like, wow, these two actors were in different movies. <laughs> did you know that Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis have worked uh, in three other movies before? Unbreakable, uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and like uh, Pulp Fiction. It's like stuff like that. But I did find a couple interesting tidbits. Okay, um, I don't have a lot. Um, but I found I don't know. And I don't know how true this is. This is IMDb, so sometimes it's a little dicey. But it said M Night Shyamalan said that the original cut of the film had a runtime of nearly three and a half hours. He, quote unquote, trimmed it up a bit by cutting three of Kevin Crumb's 23 personalities out of the film. 
Like, wait, what? is he saying is he saying that he cut out three of Kevin's personalities and that took it down to an hour and 40 minutes? It's not a long movie. No, it's it's two. I think it's two ten. I think it's no, wow. two hours and ten minutes. It's well, still, is he trying to say that there was three more characters that had a combined hour and a half of screen time? Maybe he's joking. Maybe it's kind of like we just shot a bunch of footage, uh, just playing around with the. Yeah, I, I think it was maybe like let's let McAvoy like get off the leash for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, if this movie was three and a half hours long, you, I mean, we'll give more time to other interesting stuff. Like, as we, yeah, know. like if it was three and a half hours and it fleshes out some of the ideas he put forth, I'd be interested in seeing that. But release if it's three the, and a half, release the Shyamalan cut, release, <laughs> release the Shyamalan, the Shyamalan cut. cut, exactly. <laughs> but if it's three and a half hours and the it's an hour and a half of more James McAvoy being crazy, I don't know if I'm as as turned on. For no, that. no. I think there was already too much of that anyway. I agree. I mean, there's there's three scenes that you probably could have cut that we find the same information about. There's um, as as great as McAvoy is. Yeah, there's very little that adds anything from Split. Like there's there's very little he's doing that he hasn't done already. Well, like Sarah Paulson meets with him, and then the yeah. um, the one of the orderlies meets with him, and then exactly. uh, Anna Taylor Joy meets with him, and then there's like and then Samuel L. Jackson meets with him. Like um, get rid of a couple of those. Yeah, you know what I mean. I agree. Um, Samuel Jackson, who played Elijah, is five years older than Char- Charlene Woodard, who played Elijah's mother. I did that know explains, that. Yeah. That explains the shitty makeup. And uh, I have one more little tidbit I thought was interesting. You may know this already. Uh, the original strip for Unbreakable included Kevin as an emergent villain for David to face against. But director in my Shamlon could never make it work within the confines of a single movie. Thus, Kevin ended up being split <laughs> split off into his own movie. <laughs> this film as a culmination of the original idea. So, yeah, I actually didn't know that. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, that would have been interesting, probably for the best that they, they they did that. Well, it makes sense because, you know, like like he's unbreakable. You know, Bruce Willis is on David Dunn is unbreakable and Kevin is broken. Like like there's definitely a clear direction between these two the, that they're they're supposed to be opposites of each other. Yeah. That, you know, Bruce Willis's power comes from the fact that he's unbreakable and Kevin's power comes from the fact that he's broken. Like, that's very clear to me that that's what he was trying to do. But that doesn't really evolve past that. Also, at its core, Unbreakable is an origin superhero movie. Yeah, it is. And I think adding Kevin into it, I think it just would have been too much. The balls of Samuel L. Jackson to say at the end of this movie, this was an origin story. I'm like, Unbreakable is an origin story. Split's an origin story. So this is an origin story as well. Mean, it's like, this is an origin <laughs> story and in the in, in, in the fact that um, superheroes are coming out. No, no, no. I understood what he meant, but oh, it is yeah. it is frustrating to be yeah. like, I've already seen two origin stories, man. I don't want I, I sat through this expecting a conclusion, not a beginning. That's a good point. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, categories. What's the best scene of the movie? Uh, best scene of the movie. Hmm. I gotta say, uh, it's it's probably that final fight between David and uh, Kevin. Basically, everything up until uh, until the the twist of Sam Jackson, you know, killing Kevin's dad. I think actually really works, and I think I see a lot more of what M Night Shyamalan was trying to say with this movie in that scene with the way that fight is done and everything. And I love, you know, uh, when Bruce Willis throws the police guys in the cargo container and he oh, bends great. the steel, like, uh, and then, you know, uh, there's one other one that I really like. It's not really a scene, um, but when Bruce Willis uh, has to break the door down, I actually really love that. Actually, yeah, the music, and I like how um, Elijah's like talking about him. Yeah, um, he's he's like he's like right you know now. he's like yeah. Well, if if you know if you he's he's like listen, uh, I've released Kevin. He's gonna go out and kill the. There's three floors at Osaka Tower. We're gonna go and we're gonna blow it up. Blah blah blah. And you know he's like, well, you know, but if you're not a superhero, right? So if you're not a superhero. All that's in your way is this metal door. 
And I actually really like that scene of him going and just ramming into it and then ramming into it. And then you see the dent and then it's just like, boom, boom. And then he just like busts through it. And then like, I actually think that really works uh, as like a kind of, you know, he was really in doubt for a moment and then he goes, I, I thought I found it like a really heroic. Yeah, it was kind, kind of an of uplifting, moment. kind yeah. of an uplifting scene. And um, but again, uh, what, what, I just wish Bruce Willis sold it more as somebody who's like, like his character needed to have like the that second act, like lowest point. And I yeah, feel like, you know, he was old, he was he, it seemed like he was already at the lowest point from the beginning of the movie with how with his acting in it. Like he was yeah. just like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> basically like Stallone uh, without the charm. Uh, <laughs> uh, worst scene. Oh, I got to give you my best scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I think um, I really like the beginning. I, I like David and his son. I like kind of catching up with them. I like him going on the routes. I mean, really the whole like first 20 minutes I really love. And I, I could like I could you know what? Like it'd be fun to have like a show. Like a TV show of like, uh, like yeah. real, David realistic Dunn and his superhero. son just like solving crimes and like tracking people down. Like that would be cool. I wanted more of that. There we go. We, we call it Dunn and Son. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Dunn and Son. Um, yeah, that's probably my. I mean, I guess that's kind of it's not really a, a single scene, but I like that that first twenty minutes. I really yeah. Like. Uh, what is your worst scene of the movie? Worst scene of now, this is going to be hard. <laughs> worst scene of the movie. There's a lot of worst scenes of the movie. Um, early one that jumps to mind is a uh, young Mr. Glass in the tilt a whirl, uh, where he's like the kid and he puts the stuffed animals and he gets on like the carnival ride when he's like a kid and he you goes like and he spins that? around. No, I don't like I don't like that scene, uh, mainly just because I don't. I didn't like the way the kid actor played that. What you like, want me to do? Scream more? No, no, I don't know. I don't explain. I can't explain. It. I just watched it and I got uncomfortable watching it. I don't know. I think that was the intent. But not like in a good way. Like in a sense of, I don't like this. Let's keep moving. I don't know. Okay. I don't hey, like that's that. fair. That's fair. I don't like that scene. Um, the interview scene with Sarah Paulson and Elijah's mom might be up there. Um any scene where Sarah Paulson is talking to someone that is not one of our main people. So there's also another scene when she's talking to Joseph, right? That was kind of a cringy scene. Like, well, you see, our neighbor told us to go here. In, uh, the yeah. Any scene where Sarah Paulson is talking to someone that is not Samuel L. Jackson, uh, uh, Bruce Willis, or uh, James McAvoy, those have to be all tied for my worst scenes. I'm also just not. A, I also don't like Sarah Paulson. Really? So I will. I will fully admit that. You don't that like her? I, I do not like her. I do not think she's a good actress. I've everything I've seen her in. I find her boring. Wow. And dreary. That's a yeah. hot take. A lot of people would I, disagree with you. I've always been indifferent towards her. She's never I've never felt one way or the other about her. Yeah, I don't I don't hate her. Um, I just. There's just something about her that when I see her on screen, I tune out. <laughs> There's like no other way to put it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Man, this is kind of hard because like we've pointed out a lot of this movie's flaws, but like, I don't know. There's not like a scene to me that's like, oh, this is, this was terrible. There wasn't any scenes that were like, I thought were horrible. Um, I do think, I don't know. Like, I do think it like the, the hospital stuff, well, I, I find it enjoyable. Like I like I like it, but like a lot of it is redundant. I just feel like a lot of the Kevin scenes kind of just go on for too long. Yeah, but I would it's say like, oh, look, look how many great impressions that James McAvoy can do. <laughs> like the one, especially, especially with like the orderly in him. Yeah, that first one where he's like Jade and he's like the being like a sexy lady. The orderly. <laughs> Actually, no, that part's awesome. Uh, I don't know. Oh, shit. What is the worst scene? This is like really tough for me. I don't know if I have one. Wow. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I I, thought like Joseph talking to her, like it's supposed to be funny. 
I guess. But. Yeah, yeah. It just, uh, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, just, I don't know. yeah, those scenes for me, just like uh, they just bored the crap out of me. When when she's talking to Anya Taylor Joy, when she's talking to Joseph, or when she's talking to Elijah's mom, all three of them, I'm just like, I don't care. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, best quote. So I got a couple. Uh, I love this was in the trailer. I remember seeing ads for this. And it's just like in the very beginning where uh, James McAvoy has the girls tied up and he's like, who would like a pee pee and Jay? Just like the way he says it. It's just like really funny to me. <laughs> Okay, that's a good quote. I, don't, I mean, like, I, I'm trying to think best quote. Let's see here. I actually did write down some quotes. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the beast. Okay. This is where you. Uh, okay. Uh, before the beast kills Elijah, this is where they would paint you with big eyes and bubbles of confusion above your head. I like, oh, of, I, like, I like a lot of the quotes from Elijah where he's kind of like um, the kind of meta comment. Yeah, where he's stuff. like really investing in like the whole superhero. Uh, this stuff. is where the, this is where the supervillains team up or something. I like stuff like that. I kind of like. Um, that's that's all I got. I guess I guess if I had to choose one, it'd be like who would like a PB and J. That's all I got. <laughs> who would like a PB and Yeah, Jay? he's like he's 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 the old lady persona. <laughs> He's the old lady persona. Yeah. <laughs> and I just think the way he says it is really funny. I just I just like the idea of it's like, listen, M. Night Shyamalan, he wrote this script. You know he sweated over it. What's the best line in the movie? Who would like a PB and J? <laughs> <laughs> like if M. Night Shyamalan was listening to this right now, he's crying and not like not like tears of laughter. He's like, I put all this work in, and this and is like, the oh only my God, line. Like, and I, like, there's so many, like, um, you know, your dialogue was so philosophical. Um, I really like. What does PB and J mean? <laughs> what is this supposed to represent? I think. I think the only line for me that really stands out is when uh, the horde and Mister Glass meet for the first time, and. Patricia, I think it's Patricia at the time. Yeah, like, that's well, old what lady. Do we call you, the and he's like, lady. first name Mister, last name Glass. I think that like it's cool, especially because it's like the first time that you really hear him talk in the whole movie is like during that scene because basically up to this point he's been pretty much comatose, right? And like I think I think that yeah, I think that's I think that's really cool. Okay, uh, my favorite category. Best unintentional comedic moment. Okay, I have several. Uh, <laughs> I love, okay, at the end, as, as much as I like that fight, um, anytime, like, sometimes when James McAvoy is, like, roaring, you know, when he's the horde, I couldn't yeah. help but laugh. He's just like, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> like, that made me laugh. And also, well, this was, I guess, meant to be funny, but I laughed really hard was... Uh, when when yeah when the orderly comes in he's like hey cutie and he's like he's, he's like sitting on the floor and he's like his back is all arched arched i guess that was supposed to be funny but i guess unintentional comedic moment definitely when like james mcavoy is roaring it was uh, goofy i definitely add a mcavoy thing on there i know it's supposed to seem like he's like animalistic but when he runs at the final fight and takes out the police officers and he ends up running on all fours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I get that what you were trying to do there. And I think it could have looked cool, but something about like the way they did it, it doesn't look, <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Like it looks like he's like all of a sudden in crouching tiger, hidden dragon. And he's just like floating along as he's doing this four legged run thing. And so that made me laugh uh, the first time I saw it. And it made me laugh this time as well. Um, I would also say I got something else. Oh, uh, as much as I like the first name, Mr. Last name glass, they flash back to that at a really weird time. I don't remember when it is, but like, it's literally like it's one of the things that makes me laugh is when someone flashes back to something that I've already seen like three minutes ago. And that's basically what they did there. 
is like they go and uh, they literally you use the same shot of him saying first name Mr. Last name Glass, but they're flashing back to it. And I just saw it four minutes ago. Also, honorable mention uh, when his mom, Elijah's mom's like, oh, well, he yes, he killed all those people, but he's trying to find his purpose. Moments of unintentional comedy could just be anything with Elijah's mom. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, also, too, at the end, she says something like, um, you know, you were spectacular. Yeah. And it's just like, no, all these people got hurt and people died and you are a murderer. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. I just like I can't. The more I'm thinking about it, I cannot get over her role in this movie. Yeah, I yes, I like, fully agree. Like, it's, it's like ah, uh, like that is time that could have been better spent doing something else. It's like you just, it's uh, like her her son did something so bad that it's really just hard to sympathize with him. I guarantee you, the three and a half hour cut has an hour and a half of more Elijah mom scenes. I, I don't know. <laughs> really, That's hey, why he ended up cutting out almost half of the movie. <laughs> release the Shyamalan cut. Maybe, maybe no. <laughs> uh, oh, coming on, to, coming to HBO Max. <laughs> uh, okay, best performance. I mean, uh, for I guess me, you got to give it to McAvoy. Yeah, yeah. Like, he still, you know, even though I think this is uh, this movie, he's he's not. He's displaying more characters. And so because of that, he's, you know, like in Split, as many characters as he have, you really only spend time with about four of them consistently. Yeah. Main, Edwin, main Patricia, yeah. Dennis, and yeah. uh, Barry are like the four that you really spend the most time with. And so you're, those are feel more realized. Like it feels like in a lot of these characters, he's just like, I'm going to do a voice. I'm going to change the way that I... But like one of the things that I remembered that I thought was really neat is... Um, in the scene when he's pushing Mr. Glass down the hallway uh, before he becomes the beast when he's still Patricia, I could tell that he was Patricia from the way he walked. There's like a shot of him from behind. And like I looked and I was like, OK, McAvoy is Patricia right now. And then when they cut around to him, he was playing Patricia. And so, like, I, I think that says so much about his the strength of his performance that just from looking at the his back and the way that he was moving i was able to say which personality he was and so yeah it, it goes to mcavoy hands down yeah, i, I mean he kind of had like he kind of developed these like mannerisms for like all these different yeah um, personality very impressive well, he got i can't yeah. believe he, he should have got nominated for split i like that that is ridiculous i i agree I, I think I think he's much I think he's much better in Split, but he's definitely the standout performance in this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, worst performance. I'm. I, <laughs> I think I'm gonna give it to Bruce Willis. He just seems like he just doesn't want to be there. And yeah, there was one line delivery, especially where he's like, "Get me out of here! I have to get to him before he gets out." Like, just no emotion. Yeah, I think I think we I think we figured it out. I think he just this was like, yeah. hey, Shamlon, I like you, but I'm only going to be here for two days. Uh, for me, it's a three way tie for worst performance. Uh, Bruce Willis definitely, uh, Elijah's mom uh, at a at really tied up there, uh, and then once again because I because I don't often like her in things, and she especially feels. Paulson y in this, Sarah Paulson in this. I think she's oh, no, I she's just she like she's just it it feels like in this movie especially, it feels like right before every take, they woke her up from a nap and then was like, go ahead and deliver your dialogue. Like it's very sleepy and no, 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 no. Uh, they did that and with Bruce Willis. No, with Bruce Willis, <laughs> with Bruce Willis, he was like, "Listen, unless I'm saying something, I'm asleep <laughs> in my home in California. I am not on set unless there is a shot on my face." But no, like, like it's the thing. Like she's she's very like very dreamy and very. Oh, uh, you know, uh, you all, I specialize in this 
form of psychology for the people who don't like superpowers and think they have superpowers. And I'm going to convince you that you're not. It it just I don't know if it's like maybe I'm into like ASMR or something. It lulls me to sleep. Fair point. It just does. Yeah. Fair point. Uh, You're not a Paulson fan. I get it. Um, And and, 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 And I don't. I think the mom, like, she's not bad, but like, just the way her role is written is weird. And I, I, yeah, the writing I think does her a real disservice. I also think they do a disservice by making this younger woman play an older woman. They should have just gone with, listen, we'll do a different uh, black lady, young black lady for the flashback, and then we'll just do an actual old black lady. So I in, could, the, in the present day, it could be wrong, but I. Th- if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't that the old, wasn't that the original mom from Unbreakable? So it was probably like one of those things where like, well, we have to keep her. I don't know. God, Samuel Jackson, not. gotta say, Samuel Jackson has aged very gracefully. He has, yeah. He he like, I was cool. watching Unbreakable and then this, I'm like, he doesn't really look different. Yeah, black don't crack, man. <laughs> uh, okay, so those are your uh, worst performances. Um, yeah. So we've reached the, the end of the show. Uh, so we're going to give me your final thoughts and then rate this out of five. Go. Okay. Uh, well, if you watched Unbreakable, you watched Split, watch Glass. Uh, don't walk into Glass without seeing those two movies first. Um, but I think this movie is a very flawed movie. Uh, it can be frustrating, but I'd probably watch it again. And what would your score be? Oh, yeah. My score, um, I'd probably say three out of five. Okay. Um, I think for me, I I actually like this movie. Um, I just, I think it's got a lot of great ideas. Um, but that's the thing. Like, any one of these ideas could probably make um, its, own. its own really good movie. Um, but over, I mean, I... I I don't know. I, I didn't think this, I didn't find this to be the crushing disappointment that a lot of uh, critics and, you know, people seem to think it is. I, I think it's a good movie. Maybe it's not as good as the first two, but I still liked it. I, I mean, I think this is actually a solid trilogy personally. Um, and I like these characters and it's, it's great to see, see them back. And I don't know. I, 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 I mean, you can pick this movie apart as we have, um, but <laughs> I, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I wish I wish Bruce Willis gave more of a shit. I, I really do. Um, I mean, I guess we don't know, but like, come on, we kind of know. Yeah. So I'm kind of. <laughs> I think I'm with you. I think I would give it like a three out of five. Um, I think we're kind of. Yeah, I think we both feel the same about this movie. Like, it's good. It's not great, but I had fun with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's class, Matthew. Okay. Thank you for doing this. Uh, we'll have to come on. Well, we'll have to, we're going to do Rise of Skywalker at some point in the future. I don't know. Maybe we'll do like Hudson Hawk or something. Oh, God. I want to do Hudson Hawk so bad. Okay. I love, I, that is my favorite Bruce Willis movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hands I, I, down. <laughs> I really, really want to watch it. Um, if you want right. to talk about, if you want to talk about something where Bruce Willis does not sleepwalk his way through a movie, he is fully committed to Hudson Hawk. Wasn't that um, a vanity project of his? Like, wasn't yeah, uh... it, it's the, so uh, he actually wrote the theme song for the movie before the movie ever happened. Wait a minute. So, so he, this is essentially a movie that's based on a, a, a pretend theme <laughs> he song. He had a movie. He had a song called Hudson Hawk. And he basically because this is like right post like Die Hard and everything where he's like real hot. And he walked in. This is a vanity project. And they just threw buckets of money at him to make one of the most insane movies I've ever seen. All right. But he's fully right. committed. He's fully on board. If your problem with this movie was, look, I wish Bruce Willis gave more of a shit. You're going to love Hudson Hawk because he gives like a torrent of shit. <laughs> like he gives so much shit in that movie. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful movie. All right. Well, Hudson Hawk or Rise of Skywalker? We will do one of those next time. I think everyone might know what my my ranking of Hudson Hawk is going to be <laughs> if we do Hudson Hawk. <laughs> All right, uh, Matt, thanks again. And thank you, everybody, for listening. We got new episodes every two weeks. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>